I'm Bambi Francisco with Vader News. Well, with the success of Facebook, MySpace, Bebo, and High Five, just to name a few, it's no wonder that 5 billion people are on social networks. And in a couple of years, about 84% of teenagers are expected to be on a social network. Well, if you're a brand, how do you reach that audience? Joining me to talk about Buddy Media, a company that can help you connect in those social environments, is Michael Lazaro. He's the founder and CEO of Buddy Media. Michael, thanks for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me. Well, there are a number of companies out there that provide social applications to help brands reach out to the sure. audience in social networks. Um, from what I can tell, your company provides a complete suite as opposed to just exactly. creating apps. So can you talk a little bit about the landscape of the social app providers and where sure. you fit in? Yeah, Buddy Media was created to help brands leverage all of the social nets. So there are 500 million people, as you said, who use the social nets. There's no clear way to reach them and to be effective marketing to them. There's no Google. There's no put in a credit card, you buy your, your clicks, and you're getting what you buy. So we looked at the space and we said that the opening of the social nets um, to third-party developers that started with Facebook and now MySpace and Bebo and the iPhone and pretty much every social net was a huge opportunity for brands. All of a sudden, instead of just running banners and display media, you could build out your presence where your consumers, where your users were living. So why try to take them out of those environments? Mm -hmm. Why not just try to give, put your brand in those environments? So we said in order to do that, we needed to do it in a very full service way because it's not just creating a banner and blasting it out. Right, you have to right. come up with the best strategy and do mm -hmm. the strategy. Mm -hmm. We do development on top of our development platform, so we actually launch them with our technology. Mm -hmm. And then after you launch them, you have to get people to show up. Like right, the worst right. thing is an app that just sits there right, and no one right. uses it. And that's what makes a banner, an app so different from a banner because you really need to have some, the, the we user drive interact. Users. Yeah. So let's start with, let's let's talk about some of, you have some major brands, you have sure. Fox News, you have Budweiser, about Bacardi, 50 brands so far. and big brands, you Huge don't brands. You work the with big brands, brands, not the little ones like Vader yeah. TV. We'll work with Maybe. little ones, but we also <laughs> work with big ones. But you also work with InStyle, and I, I thought this was a great app, you had 340,000 installs um, for Hollywood for Hollywood hair mo makeover, and users spent four minutes, I clearly spent several minutes um, trying to find the right hairstyle for myself. So the question is, what was InStyle's ultimate goal for sure. this campaign? You had 340,000 installs, but what was their ultimate goal? What were they trying well, this, to achieve? This was one of our first apps and okay. one, of our, um, one of our most successful apps where InStyle came to us and said, you know, we know a lot of our consumers and a lot of our readers like to live and spend a lot of time on Facebook and MySpace and other mm -hmm. social nets. Mm -hmm. And they'd grown traffic on their site and they were looking for ways to get more consumers, more audience reach so that they could sell that audience to advertisers. So instead of trying to pull them out of Facebook, they just put their brand and mm -hmm. a really engaging application inside Facebook. And so the tool that we built really helped women for the most part, even though men can use it, um, take off their hair and put on celebrity hair. So if you want Angelina Jolie or Jennifer Aniston or right. um, Gwyneth Paltrow's hair, you can basically try it on, size it, and then send it to your friends and ask, should I do this, should I not do it? And, and did they sell more magazines? Did they get more people to InStyle.com? They actually well, realized... Ultimately, what did they want to achieve? They realized that their consumers were using the application, their users, their uh -huh. readers, and they actually sold sponsorships. So they're in the business of selling, um, selling reach and frequency to advertisers, and their 18 to 34-year-old audience made up about 80% of the users of this app. Mm -hmm. um, and they sold a sponsorship that was fully integrated into the app. So there's an ad right here. We're looking. So there's an advertisement. They actually were they were able to get a sponsor. Sure, they to put they had a sponsor okay. where you see the InStyle shopping. That was right. actually a sponsor. Got it. And they sold it as a package with magazine pages and you know their website and. How you know, the long app. did this run, and how much did they pay for that? This is still running, okay. um, so it's still running. Um, the financials of the deal I can't talk about because it's okay. Time Inc. and you know they're very, okay. um, you know that's locked down. But um, let's just say it was very cost effective, and they made money from you know basically day one with the app. And do they pay on a CPM basis, or do they pay per the yeah. so download? Or the number one reason why we've gone from zero clients to 50 clients in a year mm -hmm. is our clients only pay. 
per engaged user. Mm -hmm. So it's very, if they were to pay just for CPM and just for banners to mm -hmm. try to get people here, um, it wouldn't have been as successful. So for a dollar per engaged user, they can guarantee that a certain number of users show up. What happened is we marketed it to about 100,000 users, and 100,000 you know, women, primarily between 18 and 34, showed up. And then they used it and sent it to their friend, and that grew to 350,000. So you made 350,000 dollars. Exactly. On no, that we didn't. Thing. We didn't make 350,000 dollars. That wasn't the budget for it. But they got for the budget they spent. Um, they bought about 100,000, and they actually got 350. Because oh, the great okay. thing about the social nets is, if you do something that's social and that's fun and that's engaging, okay. users will use it. They'll send it to their friends, and they'll really become you know what we call social brand loyalists. They'll you know, spread it within. Let's talk about it. let's talk about another one that you recently launched with Hollywood.com, and this is uh, one of the campaigns where you talk about a survey about who's who in entertainment. I guess this one we're looking about the top five airplane movies, exactly, um, and top five movie martial, martial artists. artists. So. Um, how are you measuring engagement here? Just how often, how many surveys yeah. are being created? So oh, just like Incel, they realized that a huge part of their audience lived on Facebook and MySpace. So mm -hmm. this is an app that we built once mm -hmm. and deployed on MySpace and Facebook. So wherever you like to hang out, you could experience it. And movie quizzes and lists are very important you know, to kind of diehard fans. What are your top ten action movies? What are your top ten... Um, you know, date movies, what are your top ten family movies? We actually did five to keep it simple. And so for them it's a way of it's audience extension, it's reaching more consumers, it's getting the Hollywood.com brand out there. Um, creating more inventory. Creating more inventory to sell, um, selling more product, you know, that they sell. Mm -hmm. um, so for them it's a, you know, instead of trying to just market in Facebook and run banners and try to get people to Hollywood.com, right. they brought Hollywood.com to right. Facebook and MySpace. Right. And the same economics applies as about a dollar for About a okay. dollar, same for all of our clients. So just a, a quick question. So what are so clearly I'm a sure. someone paid a dollar for me because I'm I'm now a member for sure. this site. But I may be inactive tomorrow, possibly. Yep. Um, except for InStyle because I'll play around with my hair. <laughs> but I may be inactive and so what is the value of a member who comes on and then leads, sure. and how? Why is that more valuable than just a person who sees an impression or sees yep. an ad? Well, the reason why it's more valuable is that people tune out ads in the social nets, and this is everyone, you know, mm -hmm. agrees with that. And it's sure. why Facebook is now offering engagement ads, mm -hmm. and MySpace is doing huge homepage takeovers. That ads in social media are ignored mm -hmm. completely for the most part. Right. And so the only way to really, you know, reach a consumer, you know, from a brand perspective is to engage them. I'm not saying you have to engage them with an application, mm -hmm. but it could be engaging them with virtual gifting through Facebook or through a poll through Facebook or through any of the engagement ads or some of the MySpace or any of the different options. So we basically, you know, say to our um, to our clients that you may get 700 million impressions, mm -hmm. branded impressions, mm -hmm. that drive 300,000 people into this app. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now they only pay for that 300, 000, those 300,000 people, right. but they're also getting the impressions and right. the engagement from that. Right, right. And we have a product called the Buddy Brain, which is a whole analytic system mm -hmm. in which we track how, you know, what they do in the app, where they go, how they use it. And you know, on average, our users spend about two and a half minutes on the on app. They apps. come back ten times on average. Okay. Um, and so, when we look at um, the breakdown of, you know, a dollar spent with branded apps versus a dollar spent with banners, um, from an engagement perspective, at least, you know, I'm not talking about like, um, you know, what happened downstream with a sale or you know, conversion, right. but from an engagement, getting in front of a consumer. They are watching for a little um, longer. The market has told us that a dollar is a very fair price, and right. it may go up a little, may go down. I mean, that's a fluid number based on, you know, the market, but that's where we are right now. Okay, uh, Michael Lazaro, you're going to stick around, and we'll talk a little bit more about your business model, where Great. you plan to take this company. So, but we're going to wrap it up there. So, I've been speaking. With with Michael Lazaro, he's the CEO and founder of Buddy Media. I'm Bambi Francisco.